grateful. I'm grateful this morning. Anybody grateful to see another day, to see another Sunday? God is so gracious. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer, ask him to um, bless our time this morning. God, we just honor you. We lift your name high, Father. We thank you for allowing us to come into your presence with thanksgiving. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you're our God, that you're mighty, that you're true. God, we warm our hearts in your presence, Lord. We ask, God, that you would saturate this place with your glory, God. Saturate this place with your presence, Father, that we would be changed, God, that we would be filled, God, with the fresh anointing of your spirit, God. Father, we need you to break out in this place, God. We need you to break out in our hearts, Father. Lord God, we ask, God, that you would just move down every aisle, God. Move on every heart, God. Father, move on every mind, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that we would be on one accord as they were, God, in the upper room, God, praising you and worshiping and waiting on your spirit, God. This morning, we wait for you, God. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. We depend on you, God. We rely on you, God. We can't do it without you, Father. So we ask you, God, that you would allow your spirit to break out in this place, God. That you would allow your spirit to reign in this place, God. Lord, you alone are worthy. You alone are holy, God. Father, we honor you this morning. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth, God. Father, we thank you, God, for the promise of your presence, God. We thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit, Father, this morning. Have your way, Father. Have your way in this place, God. Have your way in our hearts, God. Have your way in our lives, God. We need you, Holy Spirit. Father, we need you, Holy Spirit. God, we thank you, God, for what you're going to do. And we give you the glory. And we give you the honor. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
this morning. Lift up your hands in this place. If Even if you're sitting, just lift up your hand. This is Pentecost Sunday. The Holy Spirit is here already. Reach out and touch him. He's ready to meet with you at the point of your need. Amen. God, we open up our hearts to you this morning. We empty ourselves of ourselves, of our own ambition, our own will, our own ways. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to fill us up. Fill us up to the core of our being, God. And Lord, even as you instructed us to pray, when we have no words, God, that we can pray in these words, God. That we can reach out to you in these words, God. <laughs> we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come quickly. Your will be done. just like this in the book of Acts in the second chapter that about 120 people came together and the Bible records that something happened from heaven that affected the earth a sound like a rushing wind came and the Bible said that the power of God began to set on about 120 people or so who were open to the fact that God was getting ready to move the Bible said it looked like tongues of fire that were beginning to set on the folks. And God taught us how to pray. He said in verse 5, now we were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together. They were bewildered because each one of them heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in their own language. Raise your hand right now all over the building and be prepared to pray. Hear me good, in the language of your origin. If you're Spanish, pray in Spanish. If you're from Barbados, pray. If you're from Jamaica, pray. They all got together and they prayed in English like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And in French like this. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié. And in Spanish like this. 
and in Mandarin Chinese like this. And in Afrikaans. Everybody, in your own language, that kingdom come.
So, about this time in God's calendar, a couple of thousands of years ago, there were a people that God brought together for the intent purpose of filling with his Holy Spirit. And they stood in a room, gathered together, and the Bible says that they were on one accord, but they stood patiently waiting with the attitude of God, you set a promise before You ascended into heaven and you said, I will send you a comforter. I will send you someone to be with you. I sit in heaven on the right hand of my father, but I will send my spirit to come and meet you. So go and wait. And those people stood and they said, I don't want to move. I will stay here until you change me. Because I need you. I won't want to move. I will stay here until you change me, I need you. Then the Bible said, there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it came and it filled the room, and suddenly tongues, as of tongues of fire, came and sat upon each and every one of them, and those people began to speak miraculously in other tongues and other languages as the spirit gave them utterance see what happened was those people stood and they knew that they had a purpose they knew that they were waiting for something in particular to come and happen they knew that they were waiting for the infilling of the holy spirit to come in and change them so they could then go out and do miraculous works things that they have never done before speak words that they have never spoken before languages that they have never uttered before do miracles that they have never done before because jesus said greater things than even that I have done than you will go and do. So you will go forth out into the earth and you will heal the sick. You will cast out demons in my name. You will go and fill the earth with my name and my glory. You will go out and make disciples. You will go out and change the course of history because I have brought my Holy Spirit and given it to you. Somebody lift those hands and give God glory in here. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you want the Holy Spirit to come and pour out a fresh anointing upon you, to go out and do great things, to go and move like the Holy Spirit wants you to move, to go out and move like God wants you to move, to go out and do great and wonderful miracles on the earth. Hallelujah. If you can say, don't want to move, I will stay here until you change me, because I He want the Holy Spirit to come. Holy Spirit, come. Fill this room today. Fill this room today. Change my life. Change my name. Make me new. A new creation. Change my life. Change my name.
everybody come together on one accord right now. Let's align our hearts and our minds with the Lord Jesus. Let's align our minds with the mind of Christ right now. Let's begin to connect with our Father in heaven. His spirit is in this building. He's already poured it out. But there are some of us in here who need a fresh, a fresh pouring out, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing, a move of God in their lives. Hallelujah. Jesus, you 
Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Kiana, I'm so sorry. I know we were supposed to move, but indicative of the souls at the altar right now, the Holy Spirit is doing something incredible. He's doing something incredible right now. Hearts are on the altar of the Lord. Father, send your fire. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Burning away. Burning
sound came in like a mighty rushing wind. Fill the temple. Spirit of the living God, move in this place. Meet the heart of every individual in this building right now. For every cup that is not filled, overflow right now in the name of Jesus. For every cup that is three quarters of the way full, fill it and overflow right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, pour out into this place. Fill us with your power, O oh God. Fill us with your anointing, O oh God. Moving us like you've never moved in us before, O oh God. Change our lives, O oh God. Change our character, O oh God. Change the way we look and the way we act and the way we feel, Lord God. Let the very breath of life that pours through us, Lord God, move according to your will, Father, in the name of Jesus. Fill us afresh right now. Send your spirit and empower us, O oh God. Spirit of the living God, anything that is not like you, purge it out of us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move in us in ways that you've never moved before. Father, give us power, power to, 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 to bring light in dark places, power to cast out the enemy, to drive out demons, to heal bodies from the sick, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to move like you want us to move. Come in here right now, Lord God, and touch into each and every heart. Heal the sick. Pierce the heart of the unbeliever, Lord God, and bring them to the reality of Jesus Christ as Savior. In the name of Jesus, move miraculously in this place, Father. Change our hearts. Change our lives. Change our destinies. Make us look like you. Place upon us the face of Jesus Christ. Allow us to work according to your will, into your grace, into your glory. Father, we exalt you, we worship you, we declare your grace and your mercy, your glory and your power and your authority on all the earth and in the heaven. We worship you today. We bless you today. We bless you, oh God. We bless you, oh God. We bless you, oh God. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 People of God, begin to open up your mouth and fill it with praise and adoration to our God. Begin to put those hands together and bless our Lord God. Begin to open up your mouth and shout hallelujah in this place. Fill the atmosphere of praise and adoration to our God. For he is God and God alone. The only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, be majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you would just remain standing just for a moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue in the spirit, as, it continue, as the spirit continues to move in this place, we're going we're gonna to read the word of God together. Let's stay in a, in a mode of worship and reverence to the word of God. We're going to read again Acts chapter 2. And we're going to read in your hearing verses 1 through 4. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If not, you can read from the screens behind me. But the Bible says in Acts 2, chap chapter 2, verse 1, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of your most holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Shiloh. How's everyone doing this morning? Hallelujah. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. It's good to see all you here worshiping with us. 
As we move forward into our service, I just want to take an opportunity to welcome you to the presence of the Lord, welcome you to Greater Shiloh family, welcome you back. And for those who are visiting with us for the first time, welcome. If there's anyone who is visiting with us for, for, for the first time, if you would, just stand so we can recognize, we can see who you are. If you're visiting with us for the first time, God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. If you would remain standing, someone's going to come and just play something in your hand. It's good to see you all this morning. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. My name's Raymond. I'm one of the ministers here, and I just want to welcome you. Um, here at Shiloh, you are a people who know who we are in Christ. We embrace who we are in Christ, and we walk out who Christ says we are. We are one church in three physical and one virtual location. We're here in Easton, Pennsylvania. We're also in East Stroudsburg. We have a church in Haiti, and we also have an online campus. So for those who are online, welcome. Come on, worship with us, engage with us this morning as we proceed through our service. So thank you all for coming and visiting with us. It's good to see you. So now I want to ask for every member of Shiloh to go and greet these visitors. Go shake their hands, give them a handshake, a hug, or a high five, and just show them you love them. Shiloh, how do we welcome our guests? Shiloh. It's Pastor Brandon here. And guess what Sunday it is? It's Pentecost Sunday and we're excited. Today is the day that something amazing is going to happen in your life. Listen, if you're streaming in for the first time, we want to say thank you so much for coming and streaming in with us. You could have been anywhere else. You could have been streaming anywhere else, but you're streaming with us today and we don't take that lightly. Now, uh, moving forward into service, we're kind of going to get ready to go into our offering. Right after this, we're actually going to go into our pulse. Do us a favor, if you're new in this, in this space today, do um, wave your hand in the chat room. Say, you know, hello, I'm new, I'm from this place and from that place. We wanna make sure we connect with you appropriately. Now I'm outside, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm outside for, uh, for a particular reason. Um, we're celebrating Pentecost, um, and knowing that the church is not just a church that's in the four walls, but we're outside of the walls as well. We hope you're connected with um, what's going on today. It's going to be an amazing presentation. You want to make sure you prepare for this. Well, I'll come back to you very, very soon. Pentecost Sunday. Don't miss a summer Sunday. Uh, the registration is free, but we need you to go um, and to sign up so that we can uh, get an accurate assessment of how many men are going to be here. And I'm telling you, God is going to move in an amazing and amazing and amazing way. I, I want to also announce to you that our Hidden Treasures is having a $5 blowout sale. Uh, in other words, uh, you can come to Hidden Treasures and you can uh, put all the clothes you can get in this bag for $5. Um, and they're, they're closing the Hidden Treasures uh, boutique. Uh, and so we want to do a blowout sale and move our inventory. You'll be hearing more about that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, you can go down there and uh, get blessed. We were just down there the other day. There's some tremendous stuff down there. Great deals uh, for you. Also, I want to encourage you to know that SKBI um, is running um, a, a new set of classes that are going to be starting uh, over the summer. Uh, you can connect with Sister Marsha Griffin um, and learn all that, go, uh, that is going on with, SKB, uh, with uh, KBI, uh, the Kingdom Bible Institute. Uh, also, so the Tobacco Awareness Ministry um, is uh, starting a new uh, semester. You can connect and get connected with that um, as uh, you break the addiction uh, of nicotine. Listen, there's all kinds of things that are going on in Greater Shiloh Church. We're officially in the summer, so we're in dress down. I know some of y'all already dressing down. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how you come. Doesn't matter what you have on. Just come uh, and worship Jesus with us. Uh, 
if you're on social media, uh, we want to uh, connect with you. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. You go to YouTube uh, and uh, get all of our past messages, um, of course, at no charge. So we want to make sure that the gospel is available to you. And if you can't make it to church, of course, you know you can always connect with us on Facebook Live right on Sunday morning. You can um, stream in with us or you can get us on GSC Online, GSCChurchOnline.com. Listen, we're excited about what God's going to do today. Sit back. Let the Lord speak to your heart. We welcome all of our visitors. You're no longer a visitor. You're at home now. All right. God bless. Greater Shallow Church presents GSC Bear and the Brothers 2017 Men's Conference. Conference host, Senior Pastor Philip Davis. Conference theme, Kingdom Ambassadors. This is a two-day men's conference that will be held on September 29th and September 30th at the Greater Shallow Church in Eastern Pennsylvania. Guest speakers, Pastor Charles Omeda, Allentown, Pennsylvania. So we talk about this great life, but we don't pack our bags and say, I'm gonna go there because it is mine and I'm gonna live it to my fullest. Take up your cross. Pastor Reginald Steele, Phoenix, Arizona. We, we, men are going through an identity crisis. And once we begin to realize who we are and whose we are, then the spirit of insecurity goes out the window. The spirit of low self-esteem goes out of the window. Then we can begin to multiply ourselves. Pastor Harrison Sanchez, Clifton, New Jersey. Pastor Todd Hanley, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Guest artist, David Michael Wire, Houston, Texas and versatile Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This will be a free men's conference, but we are asking every man to register so that we can accommodate you when you come. To register and to purchase your men's conference t-shirt, as well as your lunch ticket, you could go on www.eventbrite.com or greatershallowchurchpa.com. Free will offering will be taken. We encourage every man to bring a man. See you there. Well, good morning, Greater Shiloh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. If you're in need of a tithes and offering envelope, you raise your hand, the temple certainly gladly place one in there. Once again, if you're in need of a tithes and offering envelope, raise your hand and the temple certainly gladly place one in there. Just want to also say, in addition to the pause, um, next week we're going to have one of the biggest block parties on this side of Easton that we've ever saw. As we celebrate our senior pastor and Lady Kay, 12th year of uh, pastor in this house, amen? Our brothers and sisters from the North Campus are going to be here celebrating with us. We're going to just take over this whole campus. We're going to have a moon bounce for the kids. We're going to have cotton candy machines, um, popcorn machines, snow cone machines, um, golf um, games, bean um, toss games, horseshoes. I can go on and go on and go on and go on. And we're going to really have a great celebration. So I'm just going to tell you, wear something comfortable. Wear your jeans, wear your t-shirts, um, wear your sandals. We're going to be really relaxed because after immediately following the 1030 service, we're going to go out to the parking lot. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have food. We're going to have hot dogs, hamburgers. Everything is going to be provided. So just bring your lawn chairs. We just ask that you don't bring your grills. <laughs> we're going to have food for you guys. We're going to have three grills or so going. So we're going to have more than enough grills burning. I have enough more than enough hot dogs and hamburgers and chips and juice and sodas and everything to go on. Um, so don't bring any um, food and anything like that. We got that covered, okay? So we just want to make sure we have enough to pass on. We don't want somebody getting upset because they didn't have some greens. Um, that, that somebody didn't share with them. So, so just, bring, just bring yourself, bring your family, and come out expecting a good time, amen? Also, in addition to that, next week, we want to really um, shower our First Lady and our pastor with our love, our gifts, our words of encouragement. Our, um, so if you have anything that you want to give them, any flowers or any words or any um, monetary gifts, we ask that you bring it again next week as well. And also, if you're in need of a, um, a pastoral anniversary envelope, we have... Um, those available. So if you want to raise your hand, a tip of certainly we're glad to place one in there as well. Uh, we want to put some monetary cash, something that doesn't jingle, um, some paper cash, um, so that we can, they can use um, to go out to dinner, um, get a cup of coffee, just enjoy each other because we put a lot of stress on them. So we need them to go out, take a vacation, relax, and be able to use some of that money um, that we bless them with. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we raise your, stand up to your feet. We'll get ready to do our offertory prayer. 
Also, I just wanted, to, as you can see on the screen, I just want to stay before you with in regards to the demolition attack. Uh, we've came a long way. So on the third Sunday, you're going to hear me um, go through the slides as it relates to how the progress we are in regards to where we are with our mortgage. But we're making tremendous progress. Um, we came a long way, but we still have far to go. Um, so I was asking you, if you didn't, didn't have an opportunity to fill out a pledge card, a commitment card, we ask you to do so when you leave. This foyer, um, there's a table um, to the right, which is a red table, which says demolished debt. Uh, we've taken, still taking pledge cards. We're still taking cash. We're still taking checks. We're still taking credit cards um, as you continue um, to look to eliminate this debt on this building. Uh, we started for 4.3 million. Right now, we're down to like 1.27. So, amen. amen to that. So we paid over three million dollars. So we we just got this little stress to go. So we we paid three million dollars in a matter of 13 years, we can pay this last million dollars off in a matter of three or four years, amen to that? Amen, because we got some people that can stand behind me and then I'm, I'm, I'm giving each week as well, so I'm not just standing up on the microphone pleading to you guys, I give each week through pushback of my pledge as well, amen? Amen. Are we get ready to raise our, our phones, our mobile devices or our-, our Now our is our offering time. Now we wanna make sure you feel included because offering is pretty important. Here at Greater Shallow, we believe that offering or giving is a form of worship. Worship is not just lyrics, it's not just a genre of music, it's not just instruments or musicianship, but worship is a lifestyle. Worship is you partnering with God in every moment of your life. And today, we wanna to give you an opportunity to give um, with, your, with your community of faith as, as, as we look to do amazing ministry here in Easton and in Stroudsburg. Now, with that being the case, if you can do us a major favor, to your right, there's a giving tab. Click the giving tab. It'll take you to our push pay app. And on our push pay app, you can give. You can donate. Now, we, we're not obligating you to give. We don't believe in obligation here at Greater Shallow when it comes to giving. But here at Greater Shallow, we believe that it's, it's, it's a donation. It's something free that you're able to do to be able to help the ministry do amazing things. We love you so much. I'll get back with you very, very soon. Remember, it's to your right. It's the give tab, the push pay app. Um, and from there, you'll be able to take part of giving with us. Love you much. See you a little bit later.
When I look back over my life and I see what God has brought me from you a great God. Come on, put those hands together if you're serious about that. Thing. Hallelujah. Come on, can you put your hands together for our choir this morning? Happy Pentecost Sunday. Come on, would you stand to your feet? Let's prepare for the Word of God. You all look so lovely this morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, do me a favor and just find somebody on your road. Just shake their hand and say, I'm glad you're sitting next to me today. Come on, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. I don't know about you, but it's a good thing for us to hang out in the house of God together. For us to hang out, amen, in the house of the Lord. Come on, find somebody else. Shake their hand. Tell them, I'm glad you're, I'm glad, glad you're right next to me today. Now make a declaration. Make a declaration. Just declare we're going to give God praise this morning. Come on, just look him in the face and tell him, give God praise with me. Give God praise. Come on, give God praise with me. Give him praise with me. Let, let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Y'all going to be together for the next 45 minutes, so you might as well just go and hang out. Amen. We might as well have a good time since we're sitting next to one another. Praise the name of our God. Amen. Amen. Let the choir come on back in after they didn't go get some coffee or something. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Y'all look fabulous this morning. Hey, let's take a look at the scripture. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. I'm only going to read two verses, verse 1 and 2. Look what it says. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Somebody say fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house. Somebody say the whole house where they were sitting. You know, I'm, I'm coming to the end. I keep coming to the end of this same series, but the Lord keeps speaking to our heart about help, Lord. I want to change. <laughs> There's a whole lot of changing and transformation that's been going on over the last seven weeks. And thank you for your emails and phone calls and Facebook messages about how God is dealing with your heart and transforming your heart. He's been doing the work on me as well. And so I'm grateful for that. Help, Lord, I want to change transformational power. Let's pray. Lord, we give you praise today. We honor you because you're God and above you there is none other. We give you glory for the outpouring of your spirit. You're so amazing. You love us with this deep, unconditional love that sometimes it's hard to wrap our minds around the fact that you're God and you considered us and you loved us and you demonstrate that love to us in such a way by giving your son Jesus to die and then giving us the Holy Spirit to live. Just to my mind, my natural mind, it doesn't make sense, but I'm so glad that you're God and I'm not. And I'm glad that today we can celebrate your love and your mercy. We can celebrate your power. We can celebrate together, not just as individuals, but as a community of faith. Those who have the same things in common. We all love you, Lord. 
And so now we ask that you'd be with us. Let your spirit abide. Let your presence permeate the room. Not just here, but all of those folks who are watching us online. Lord, let the same presence that is here meet them in their living room, on, in their cars, while they're driving. We thank you for that. Now speak to our hearts, Lord. We wait patiently with open minds and open hearts to receive the word of God. We declare these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So, so we wanted to do something a little different today. We wanted to give you the word, right, because we've all heard Pentecost messages. Uh, but we wanted to give you the word um, through the eyes of Peter, right? Because, because Peter was a pretty interesting dude. Um, you know, Peter was one of the first disciples that was called. We know Peter was a businessman. We know Peter, um, you know, was a fisherman. Him and his brother had a fisherman's business. Um, and, and, and we know that, that prior to his name being changed to Peter, uh, it was Cephas. It was, it was uh, Simon. And, and Peter, Peter was a pretty interesting dude because he walked with Jesus from the very beginning. Uh, he was with the Lord the whole time. Uh, essentially, uh, that, that, that he was there when Jesus turned water into wine. Peter, Peter was there when, when Jesus um, 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 raised uh, the, the, the young girl from the dead. As a matter of fact, Jesus made it a point to bring Peter, James, and John with him into the room. Uh, wh one of the problems with Peter, though, is that, is that Peter, Peter was impetuous. Uh, in, in other words, P Peter was, he was over-anxious. He would always speak out of turn. He would always talk when it wasn't time to talk. Uh, for example, for example, Jesus goes up on the Mount of Transfiguration um, and he takes Peter, James, and John with him. Um, and, and Jesus, the Bible says, literally begins to glow like the sun. And, and he has a, a heavenly meeting where the Father is there and the prophets of old are there and they're dialoguing and strengthening him, preparing him for his crucifixion. Um, and, and Peter, in this moment, thinks it's a good time to say, hey, uh, I'm, it's good that we're here, Lord. <laughs> And, and literally, God has to speak from heaven and say, hey, listen to my son. Be quiet. This is not a time to speak, Peter. But, but, but also, Peter, in his impetuosity, in his faith, that there was one time that they were on a, in a boat uh, and a storm came. And the storm was rocking and rolling. And, and they were afraid they were going to die. And they look up. And who do they see? They see Jesus walking on the water. And Peter was the one that said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Peter steps out of the boat by faith and literally walks on water with Jesus. P Peter, Peter uh, had an amazing point of view because he was there with the Lord the whole time. He was there when Jesus fed the 5,000. He, he was there, as a matter of fact, he was uh, one of the disciples who picked up the loaves that were left over after God and, and uh, did this amazing miracle. P Peter, Peter was there later when Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus who had been dead. And Peter was there when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> they say old Lazarus came hopping out of the grave. Jesus spoke to the grave clothes that were hold, said, loose him and let him go. And, and, and Peter was there while after he raised him from the dead and, and Lazarus was found sitting in the house not long from there. In other words, Peter was there and saw the whole thing. P Peter was there when they rode into Jerusalem and Jesus was on a donkey and they cried, Hosanna! B blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Peter was there the whole time. He had a front seat view to the miracles of Jesus. B but, but, but Peter was also there. Uh, when, 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 when Jesus at the Last Supper uh, began to declare that his soul was vexed and that he needed a place that he could go pray, and then he goes uh, up to the Garden of Gethsemane again, taking Peter, James, and John, and then he tells them, y'all stay here, I'm going to go a little bit further. And Jesus goes into the, into the garden, but before he goes, he said, y'all stay here and pray. And, and, and Jesus went and prayed, and by the time Jesus got back, all of them were asleep. Peter was one of the ones that was asleep. But Peter was there. Peter was there when Judas betrayed Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and, and literally, when they came to uh, arrest Jesus, Peter was there. Peter was there. Peter pulled out his sword, and Peter cut off the ear of Malchus. And Jesus told him, listen, no, Peter, that those who live by the sword will, 
Die by the sword. And Jesus picks up the ear of Malchus and prays for him, and the ear gets back on Malchus, and they arrest Jesus and take him. Peter was there. Peter had enough courage to follow Jesus um, to where uh, they, were, they were judging him. And then Peter is warming his hands by the fire, and somebody recognizes him and says, you're one of them. And Peter says, oh, no, I don't know him. And, and, and again, a second time, uh, someone else says, uh, I believe it was a servant girl, who says, you're one of them. And Peter says, no, I don't know them. And the third time, they say that Peter may have used an expletive or a, a, a stronger word to say, I don't know him. And, and the cock crew crowed. <laughs> Peter was reminded that Jesus had told him the night before that before the morning comes, before the, the rooster crows in the morning, you will deny me three times. Imagine the shame. Imagine the weight. Imagine his guilt for leaving Jesus, the one who is the Son of God, the one who saved him, the one who he saw walk on water, the one who turned water into wine, the one who fed 5,000 with a few fish and some loaves of bread. Imagine the fact that this man was his chief disciple, and in the time that Jesus needed him, he denied him. Guess what? We're all Peter. <laughs> You're Peter, and I'm Peter too. Well, we've all come short of the glory of God. Uh -huh. It's in the Word of God. It, it says all have what? Sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all, listen, come up short. We've all missed the mark. We've all sinned against the Lord. We've all missed the mark. We've all made mistakes. We are all Peter. But the beauty about Peter is that when Jesus found him, he wasn't Peter. When, when Jesus found him, he was Simon. But when, when Jesus found him, he was just a fisherman. Jesus told him, if you follow me, I will make you a fisher of And so Peter then becomes now this amazing disciple, watch this, who in the moment that the Lord needed him, cowered. He fell back. But the reality is, we've all fallen back on the Lord at some point in our lives. But we've all come up short. We've all missed the mark. But the good thing is, listen to me, the good thing is, is that even when we miss the mark, God doesn't give up on us. Uh-huh. After Jesus rose from the dead, he told them, listen, go get my disciples and go get Peter too. In other words, Peter's shortcoming did not, listen, disconnect him from God. Peter's mistakes did not disqualify him from being a man of God. Peter's issues did not, listen, hinder him from fulfilling God's purpose and God's plan. In other words, Peter had to remember that when Jesus found him, he was Simon, but he changed his name to mean a stone or a rock. In other words, you're going to go through some stuff, um, Peter, but let me tell you something, you're more than meets the eye. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Jesus told Peter, he said, listen, he said, listen, Peter, the devil has requested you. Woo, Jesus. He, he said, that, you, you know, that gives me some insight into spiritual warfare. And, and, the, and the insight is, Jesus said to Peter, he said, listen, let me tell you something, Peter. There's such an anointing on your life, listen, that the devil has requested you. He, he's asked for permission to put his hands on you. But Jesus told him, listen, don't worry about that, Peter. I have prayed for you. Aren't you glad today that you have an intercessor who stands between you and the enemy? Come on, and the devil has no right to you if you are a child of God. He said, don't worry about it, Peter. I prayed for you. He wants to sift you like wheat, but I'm going to cover you like you're my child. Pray for He wants you, Peter. See, he wants you too. He wants to destroy us. He is a hinderer. He wants to stop us. But, but Peter, Peter had no idea that God was going to use him the way that he was going to use him. But there was a process that Peter needed to walk to. He needed to deal with his guilt. He needed to deal with his shame. He needed to deal with his brokenness. He needed to deal with his own impetuosity. Peter needed to be dealt with. And so God watched Peter walk through this. But watch this. He walked right alongside of him when he went through. Uh-huh. God's plan for Peter. He said, your name is Peter. 
And upon this rock, not Peter, but upon this rock, I will build my what? Church. Listen, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It was Peter who climbed the heights of theological preparation and declared that thou art the what? Christ, the son of the living God. See, God knew what his plan was for Peter, but Peter didn't know the full plan. I, I, I stopped by to tell somebody today, you got to remember what God's plan is for your life. Uh huh. You got to remember that God ain't through with you yet. You got to remember that God sees your end before your beginning. So don't get destroyed in the middle of your mess because God is taking you to through something to get you to something. Let me say it again. God has taken you through something to get you to something. There's something bigger. There's something brighter. There's something better. Come on, you just got to hold on and walk in faith and know that if God is allowing you to go through it, he's going to bring you to something else. Peter, all Peter had to do was remember what Jesus had said about him. He needed to recall the word of the Lord that has been declared on him. You know, it was Peter that later down the road, uh, I believe it's in 1 Peter, he would begin to now talk about who we really are in God. Uh-huh. He, and look at what he said. He said, but you, but some, some, look at somebody tell him, but you, but you, but you are a chosen generation. Uh-huh. It was the same Peter who had denied the Lord. Watch this. It was the same Peter later on after he walked with the Lord and, and, and saw God's hand. He said, remember this about yourself. You're a chosen generation. Uh-huh. Remember this about yourself. You're a what? A royal priesthood. Remember this about yourself. You're a holy nation. Uh, in the King James Version, it says you are a peculiar people. Watch this. That you, and who have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light that you may show forth the praises. In other words, Peter, even though, listen, he was in his state of brokenness, denial. He was in his state of, of guilt. Watch this. All he had to do was remember, come on, what God had said about him. And I stopped by to encourage somebody today. All you got to do is recall who God said you really are. Come on, not who people said you are, not what your mistakes define you as, but who God said you are. He said, you're a royal priesthood. You're a chosen generation. You're a holy nation. Watch this. And you are to show forth his praises. All Peter had to redo is call the word of the Lord over his life. All Peter had to remember, come on, is that God said he's just. God said he's forgiven. God said he's holy. God said he's righteous. God said he's called. God said he's anointed. All he had to begin to do to get beyond where he was was to remember what God said about him. Well, God's word had, listen, was hovering over him, even in his trouble, even in his brokenness. The word of the Lord that God has spoken over him, come on, begin to give him strength. And he began to get built up, even in his brokenness, while he had messed up and fallen away from God. I'm telling you, there's a word hanging over your life, and that word, come on, is not going to return back to God void. It will accomplish what he sent it out to you to do, and there will be purpose that will be established in your life. You got to remember who God says that you are. Lord, help me. I want to change. The weight and pain of shame is heavy. I, 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 I am not a rock. I am not solid. I am anything but solid. While fishing with my friends on the sea of Tiberias, Jesus appeared to us. I am bossing through off my garments and plunged into the water. I am bossing trying to kill the servant of the high priest to protect Jesus. Then I turned around and denied him. Not once, but three times. Where is the honor in that? Why would he use me? Me? How could somebody like me who walked with him, talked with him, prayed with him, turn on him? I turned on him. Father, Father, I'm not worthy, Lord. I'm just not good. But Father. But something, something won't allow me to stay down and broken. Father, is that true? Can you forgive me? Can you forgive me? 
<laughs> Repentance is available. Forgiveness is available. Restoration is available. You know, the thing that I, I assume that Peter had to walk through in the depth of his denial was the reality of his sin. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been faced with bad decisions that are outside the will of God for your life? Have you ever realized, listen, that when you have fallen, you have fallen and you have broken the heart of God? Have you ever considered, watch this, this amazing love that God has for us, come on, that causes us to even when we do wrong, we want to get it right with him because there's something on the inside that won't let us rest. There's something on the inside that won't let us stay out of relationship with God. I, I believe it's in 2 Corinthians. It begins to talk about the importance of repentance. Watch this, what it says. It says for godly sorrow. Somebody say godly sorrow. Godly sorrow produces something in our life. Godly sorrow produces in us, listen, in us, it produces repentance, a change of mind. So something had to happen in Peter for him to deny the Lord, but then something had to happen in Peter for him to run back to the Lord and to be restored. You know, the cool thing about God, and I hope you grab this in your spirit, the cool thing about God is even though Peter denied him, it did not disqualify him. Let me say that again. Even though Peter denied him, it did not disqualify him. As a matter of fact, when Jesus rose from the dead, come on, he told them, he said, I want you to go get my disciples. And as a matter of fact, I want you to make sure that you hear me clearly. Go get Peter too. Because God had a plan for Peter's life. I don't know if you're in the building, Peter. I don't know if you're here and you feel like your decisions have disqualified you. Your, your decisions have caused you to fall away from God. Your decisions have caused you to lose hope of what God's plan is for your life. But I want you to know that God specializes in going after those that people think are lost and then cleaning them up, filling them up, and using them to his own glory. But the thing that Peter had to do is Peter had to remember, come on, that he offended God. That is offense, even though, watch this, even though uh, there were other issues to it, the most important person that he offended was God. See, we forget sometimes that even when we sin, we are hurting the heart of God. Repentance, it said godly sorrow worketh repentance. Put that scripture back up there for me. Godly sorrow worketh repentance leading to what? Salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. In other words, it's not I'm sorry because I got caught. We've all done that, right, and cried the cro crocodile tears. But this is having a heart change on the inside that says, God, I am sorry that I have sinned against you, that I have offended you, that I've broken your heart. David said it this way in Psalm 51. He said, against thee and thee only have I sinned. Wait a minute. Hold up. You, you slept with Bathsheba. You cheated on your wife. You lied about it, you killed Uriah, or you had him killed in battle, and your response to God is against you and you only? There's a lesson in there for us to learn, and that lesson is that our disobedience hurts the heart of God. Watch this, and it hurts the heart of God first. So before I get it right with you, I've got to get to God, and I've got to make it right with Him, and I've got to say, Lord, here I am. I'm broken. I'm hurting. I'm going through it. I know I offended you. Lord, forgive me. Watch this. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. I, I think that word godly sorrow means remorse. That, 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 how, how many of you know that remorse is important in the process? Uh-huh. Because when you're really remorseful, you feel it in your heart. When you're really remorseful, you feel it in your gut. When you're really remorseful and you're really sorry, you have remorse for what you have done. Watch this. Remorse leads to repentance. Repentance, watch this, leads to renewal. 
In other words, that when I, when I learn how to be sorry for what I've done against God, and I know we don't like this kind of preaching, but listen, the reality is if we are not owning our stuff and acknowledging our sin and saying, Lord, I've done this, I've messed up, I've done it wrong, and I've offended you, come on, there is no change in us. There is no real transformation. In other words, we've got to own our stuff and recognize, listen, that we have fallen far from him. But the good thing about God, just with Peter, listen, even even though he had fallen far, God had not forgotten about Peter. Watch this. And God hadn't forgotten about you either. Uh -uh, because repentance leads to renewal. That there is a renewal when I turn from my wicked ways and when I turn back to God, when I choose to leave that way and turn back to him, there's a renewal of your soul, a renewal of relationship, a renewal of connectivity. I, I don't know about you. Have you ever been caught in sin and so deep in sin that you felt like it was just blocking your relationship with God? Have you ever felt so overwhelmed by the guilt of your sin? Imagine what Peter was going through, that, that it, like, it, 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 it disconnected you from the Lord. Watch this. We need to be renewed. Renewal leads to restoration. We need to be restored by God. But many a times our hearts have become so cold and so hard towards God, we can continue in sin and continue in sin and continue in sin. Come on, that it just becomes our normal. Oh, I know you real spiritual people like, well, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't cheat, I don't want around. Yeah, but you're a gossip. Oh, it just got real for us, huh? I'm not talking about Peter, I'm talking about us. I'm talking about us. We need restoration. Watch this. And restoration leads to, listen to this, a refreshing. That, that, that how many of you need to be refreshed by God? Uh huh. It says that when we come into repentance, it leads to refreshing, that there is a refreshing of your soul. If you're brittle, if you're weary, if you're down, if you're not uh, prospering, watch this, in your spiritual walk, it's because you need to be refreshed. You need to be refreshed. And refreshing, listen, comes from repentance. It comes from turning back to God and turning away from your sin. The Bible says it'll be called times of refreshing. And there is a season that God refreshes us. The thing about old Peter, Peter cried out. He, he cried out. He cried out to the Lord. What about you? What about you? Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. I have denied your son, Jesus. I have denied my friend. Forgive me for being quick to anger and forgive me for always wanting to jump forgive me for being quick to speak and not slow to listen forgive me for being impulsive and forgive me for being anxious for everything I'm ashamed of my denial I am anything but a rock. I am not a dependable leader, Father. I am unworthy, my Lord. I'm unworthy. But have you forgiven you? <laughs> have you accepted Peter? and let go of Simon? Have you accepted the call and let go of the denial? Are you ready to be a rock? The gates of hell shall not prevail. Accept the name change. Are you ready to experience a move like never before? Are you ready to build? Or are you standing in your own way? Are you ready to experience the glory? You know, 
He must have been broken. I, I want you to know that in your broken place, God will fill you. In, in the place of humility and recognizing a need for God is the place where God specializes in filling. See, because when we're walking in pride and when we're walking in, I got it all together, and when we're walking in, I got all the answers, come on, there's no room for God because your pride is filling yourself. But when we come to humble ourselves and say, Lord, I need you. See, there was something that God wanted to get to Peter. And so Peter's denial and Peter's getting to this height, maybe spiritually where he thought he was all that, God was like, you need to be humble. But the beauty of it is that in his humility is where God was able to pour out the power of God on Peter's life. In his brokenness, God specialized, listen, and filling those broken places. See, here's the beauty of our God. He will fill you. Uh, here's the beauty of our God. He wants to fill you. Uh, here's the beauty of our God. Listen, he desires to fill you to the point of overflowing. Why? Not for you, but so that his kingdom can be established on the earth. See, Acts 1 and 8 is real simple. He says that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive what? 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 See, God knew that he had a plan for Peter's life and that Peter would be incomplete without the infusion of the power of the Holy Ghost, even though Peter had denied him, even though Peter had left him, even though Peter committed an act of violence, even though Peter, listen, talked out of turn. All of that, God said, I can use your weakest point and make it a strength in the kingdom of God. See, God wants to fill you with his presence. See, the whole day of Pentecost was not about the disciples. It was about the plan of God being fulfilled in the earth. It wasn't about the 120 because if it was 12, God could have did it with 12. Listen, it was about God's intention, what he had in mind from the very beginning of time. Listen, it was always that God in us, come on, would be our only hope of glory. That, 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 that imagine the contradiction. That, that this body, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Think about all the things that you've done with your body. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot, right? But that God is so much God. And has so much love for us that he says, even with the mistakes that you've made, even with the decisions that you've made, even with the lies that you've told, the drugs you have ingested, the sex that you've been involved in, God says, listen, I love you so much that I'm going to clean you up and then I'm going to come and live inside of a body, come on, that has been used for unrighteousness. The beauty of our God is that he cleans us up and then he lives in us and he and habits us and he walks with us and he talks with us and he does it from the inside out the power of the holy ghost on the inside uh, living through me uh, speaking through me ministering through me singing through me to the glory of god the father i don't understand how he could do it but i'm so glad uh, that he's god uh, and i'm not he can live wherever he wants uh, and he chooses to live uh, inside of me Imagine Peter's reality when he realized that something amazing was going to happen. He gets restored back to the disciples and the same people, the same people who denied Jesus because it wasn't just Peter. Peter just got called out on it. The rest of them were running and hiding. He reengages re with the disciples and they have an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus says, wait a minute, I need you to do something for me. He said, I need you to go, don't leave Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Until the power, until the promise of the power comes down. What promise? What power are you talking about? <laughs> what, 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 what do you have in mind, Jesus? He said, listen, I've already told you in John 14, 15, and 16 that when I go away, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, uh, but I'm going to send something. Uh, come on, and it's called, he's called the Holy Ghost. 
Jesus said this. He said, my work is finished. <laughs> my, my, my work on this earth is done. It is completed. When I went to the cross, I said, it is finished. I preached every sermon I was supposed to preach. I healed everybody I was supposed to heal. I declared the word that I was supposed to, oh God, that I was supposed to declare. It is done. It is finished. It is complete. And when he finished his chapter, he closed the book, met them in Jerusalem, said, I'm going up to glory now, but in a few days, baby, I'm going to send you something that is going to blow your natural mind. He's going to be the Holy Ghost, and he's not just going to walk alongside of you. Uh, he's going to take up residence in you. And this same Peter that was broken, uh, that was disgusting. Uh, come on, this same Peter who denied him. Uh, the same Peter who was a coward got in the presence of the Lord. Uh, and seven days later, on the day of Pentecost, uh, the Bible says, and suddenly, somebody holler, suddenly, because when suddenly comes, uh, it doesn't matter what you're going through. When suddenly comes, uh, when God gets good and ready, come on, he going to suddenly sweep into your life, suddenly fill you with his power, suddenly take you to another level. Suddenly, the same Peter who was lost stands up and declares the word of God. The same Peter who maybe they judged and said he'd never be nothing, stands up and becomes all that God called him to be. The same Peter who was cast aside and in fear and under the guilt and condemnation of his decisions steps up by the power of the Holy Ghost and begins to declare, these folk ain't drunk as you suppose. <laughs> this is that which was spoken about 700 years ago. Y'all been waiting on the Messiah. He done came and left. You, 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 you've been looking for this Jesus to restore Israel back to power. But, but I'm telling you, there's a whole nother kind of power. This, this ain't about a worldly kingdom. This is about the kingdom of heaven coming down to earth. This is about the kingdom advancement. Listen, the whole world changed on the day of Pentecost, 50 days from the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Seven Sabbaths plus one day, 50, my God, 50 days, God pours out his spirit. Come on, and the power of God falls in that room. There were men, there were women, there were just from regions there in Palestine, and the power of God so hit the room that they their minds got taken over. Let me say this to you. Come on, when the power of God really hits you, come on, it's going to take over your mind. It's, he, he's going to take over the way you think. You won't think like you used to think. You won't do what you used to do. Why? Because he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. When the power hits, come on, something happens. There's a... <laughs> There's a transforming power, come on, that will change your life forever. P Peter, Peter, Peter was the same old impetuous Peter, but now he wasn't impetuous in his flesh. Come on, he was powerful in the kingdom of God. He had a word from the Lord. All of those weaknesses, God took them and turned them around by the Holy Ghost. And that same mouth that used to get him in trouble brought trouble to the devil. Why? Because he began to allow the Holy Ghost to work in his life. And he began to declare that the kingdom of God is here. See? Through Peter's eyes, he was a broken man, but his brokenness was the path to his restoration. His brokenness was the path to his refilling. His brokenness was the path to him being utilized by God to declare a message of love and hope and restoration. His brokenness only took him to a place where he was ready to be used of God. See, this is the beauty of our God. He's no respecter of persons. <laughs> I said he's no respecter of persons. You could be Peter too. <laughs> All he's looking for is our availability. All he's looking for is an open heart, faith, the grain of a mustard seed. That's all he's looking for. And they declared the word of God. 3,000 on that day were saved. The world as we know it has changed forever. Will you look at somebody and just tell them he will fill you? He will fill you. He will fill you. 
You, Peter, are a rock. I, Peter, am a rock. You will preach the gospel. I will preach the gospel. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, before I was formed I in my for mother's womb, you, you I predestined me. you. You predestined I me. put a word in your mouth you put a to, word draw in my mouth. Them near, to draw them to near me. to you. Open your mouth and speak, Peter. Father, is that you? Master, it's your spirit. It's your spirit that you left as a comforter. Rain on me, Father. Rain on us, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, but we worship you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Uh.
it's only the third hour in the day, but this is what was uttered to the prophet Joel. And then the last, and I shall be fair. Then in the last days, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions, your old men shall see dreams, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, and blood, and fire, and vapor, and smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day the Lord comes, that great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you feel his presence, power, and his grace? Open up the hands as we call upon your holy name, saving name of Jesus, healing name of Jesus, righteous name of Jesus, healing name of Jesus, wonderful name of Jesus. Savior, let all heaven and earth proclaim the kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there's something about that name. Jesus. Say with me again, Jesus. Hey, listen. You may be in this building today or online today and you've never declared Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. You never said, Jesus, 
Maybe you've been in church, around the church. Maybe you've heard your grandmama and grandpapa talk about it, but, but you for yourself have never said, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. You've never made the confession of Christ Jesus. I will tell you, until the confession happens, there is no salvation. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, take a moment, bow your head, close your eyes. This is a moment for your personal reflection. If you're here in this building today and you say, today I know that I don't have Jesus in my heart, I will tell you, you don't have to leave without him. I will tell you that he loves you so much that he wants to save you today. He wants to rescue you from sin. You're here today. I'm telling you that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, just like on the day of Pentecost, is moving on your heart. God wants to save you today. If you're here in the building today and you say, that's me, I need to give my heart to Jesus. I need to give my life to him. I need Jesus to forgive me of my sin. On the count of three, I'm just going to ask you to lift your hand up in the air as a show of faith. One, choose the Lord today. Two, three. Come on, get that hand up in the air. Say, today is my day. I see that hand. I see that hand. Is there someone else today? You say, today I choose the Lord. Don't let the devil steal this moment. This is a critical moment for your salvation, for your eternity. Is there another hand today who will say, today I choose the Lord Jesus Christ. Today I choose him as my Lord and Savior. Come on, let's thank God as my brother comes. Is there someone else today you'll say, today I choose Jesus. Come on, greet him and welcome him into the family of God. Is there someone else today you say, I choose God today. Today I choose the Lord. Today I make my calling and election sure. Bless you, sir. Today I choose him. Listen, maybe you're here today and you say, I've fallen away. I served the Lord at one point in my life, but I've fallen away and I need to turn it around. I need to get my heart right with God. I'm telling you, you don't have to leave here the way you came today. Today, God can save your soul. Come on home, son. We love you and miss you. Yes, sir. We love you and miss you. Monty. <laughs> we love you and miss you, brother. Welcome home. Welcome home. Come on, Shiloh. One of our sons is back home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I need some men to stand with him. Come on, there's somebody else today. You're saying today, I've lost my way and I need to get my heart right with Jesus. I'm telling you, you don't have to leave here the way you came. The Spirit of God is moving upon your heart. Come on, daughter. That's it. Come on, daughter. Come on. Come on, young people. Come on from the balcony. God is here today. The Spirit of the Lord is moving on your heart. Say yes to God today. You don't have to leave here the way you came. Today, the Lord's changing your heart. Today, the Lord's changing your life. Last but not least, maybe you're here today and you say, I'm saved and I love God, but I don't have a church home, a place I can call my own. Or maybe you're transitioning and you're bringing yourself here to Greater Shiloh to join us in our fellowship. We'd love to have you as part of this family. If there's one person, one individual who will say, today I join myself to this church. Maybe you're not baptized and you need to be baptized. We'd love to be able to walk you through that process. Is there one today who will say, today I choose Shiloh. Today I make a decision to be a part of this great church. While I have you, those of you that are online, listen, right where you are, there's a little button on the screen where you are. If you want to raise your hand, go ahead and do that. Last week we had 11 people online give their heart to Jesus Christ. There's no distance in faith. God can reach you right in your living room. God's speaking to your heart. You're not online by mistake. God's speaking to your heart. Something God wants to do in your life. I'm going to do something with you if you're not saved today. I want you just to take a moment and I'm going to pray with you. I want you to repeat a prayer after me. Bow your head and close your eyes. Those that are in the living room at home as well. Say, dear Lord, I'm a sinner. Made some mistakes, Jesus. But you said in your word, that if I come to you and I confess to you, you would forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Lord, here I am. You know all about me. I believe 
that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. And I believe that he rose again on the third day. Lord, fill me with your power. Fill me with your presence. Forgive me of my sins. I want to be born again. In the name of Jesus, we declare that it is so. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a great praise. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Off to my left, I'm going to ask you to go with the folks with their hand up. They're just going to pray with you and encourage you in Jesus. Hey, listen, there's another call I need to make, and I'm going to do this quick. Come on, if you want to experience just the filling and infilling of the Holy Ghost, I want you to come and meet me here on this altar. Come on, if you're saying, Lord, I just want a deeper relationship. I just want to feel your presence. I just want an infusion of your power. Meet me here on this altar. We're going to pray with you just for a minute. It ain't going to take long. Come on, 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 come on. I need my ministers. Y'all come stand with these folks. Come on. We still believe that God wants to fill us. He's still in the practice of filling us. For those that open their heart and their mind to Jesus, say, Lord, I just fill me up till I overflow. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I want to run over. I want to run over. Come on. Just begin to focus on the Lord. Just begin to focus on the Lord. Come on, just begin to focus on the Lord. Come on, just begin to focus on the Lord. Come on, get to the place of brokenness. Place of openness. Come on, just say this to the Lord. Lord, I'm open. I'm open, Lord, to whatever you have for me. I'm open, Lord, to the filling of the Holy Ghost. I'm open, Lord. I'm open, Lord. I'm open, Lord. I'm hungry for more of you. Come on. Just begin to tell them, Lord, I'm hungry for more of you. Lord, fill me to the point of overflow. Come on, just begin to ask him. Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me to the point of overflow. Open your mouth and just begin to say, Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me. Fill me, Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me. Fill me to the point of overflow. Fill me to the point of overflow. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't be ashamed of who's on your right or who's on your left. It's between you and God. Come on, Lord, fill me. Come on, fill me, Jesus. Fill me, Jesus. Fill me, Jesus. Come on, open those hands up. Open those hands up and say, Lord, just fill me. Come on, Lord, fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me, Lord. Fill me. I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you. And your word declares those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Come on, Lord. Lord, I'm hungry for you. Lord, I'm thirsty for you. Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I want to drink from that fountain that will never run by dry. Lord, let tongues of fire fill me now God in the name of Jesus let the power of God come on fill me now come on open your mouth and just begin to declare it just begin to declare it just begin to declare it come on open up your mouth open up your mouth open up your mouth come on and give God praise in this building come on open up your mouth open up your mouth open up your mouth come on open up your mouth open up your mouth Lord fill me to the point of overflow come on don't get tired now come on Lord Come on, Lord, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for an outpouring, for an outpouring of your Holy Ghost. I'm ready, Lord, for an outpouring of your power. Come on, desire him. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just begin to declare his goodness. Begin to declare his grace. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we adore you. Come on. Come on. I'm hungry, Lord. I'm hungry for you, Jesus. I'm hungry for you, Jesus. I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you, Lord. Come on. I'm thirsting for you. I'm thirsting for you. Lord, I'm thirsting for you. I'm thirsting for you. I'm thirsting for you. you. Fill me up till I overflow. Come on. Here we go. Fill me up. Come on, come on, come on, between you and God. Come on, between you and God. Between you and God. 
Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Come on, Lord, fill me up. Fill me up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, Lord, fill me, fill me, fill me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Till I desire in your faith is what causes God to respond. Your hunger is what creates a space for him. You need to know today that God is filling you up as you're requesting to be filled. He's filling you with love. He's filling you with his power. He's filling you with his spirit. He's overflowing in your life and in your heart and in your mind. This is a moment where you drink from the fountain of the Holy Spirit. It's a fountain that never runs dry. See, because the Holy Spirit is about power. It's about power. He declared in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. I want you to know that power is in you right now. Some of you will speak with other tongues. Some of you will desire other tongues. Don't stop desiring what God has for you. Whatever God has for you is for you. Trust that the work of the Holy Spirit is happening in you right now as your heart and as your mind is open to Him. Listen to the voice and the urgings and the promptings of the Holy Ghost. This is a moment of definition for you. There is a well inside of you called the Holy Spirit who moves in power and direction. He's speaking to your heart and to your mind even now. I want to pray for you, Father. Thank you for this, your people, who have expressed a hunger and a desire to go deeper in you. Now you declare in your word, God, that those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Fill us today, O oh God, with yourself. Leave no room for selfishness and vaingloriousness. Leave no room, God, for anything other than you. Because, Lord, we realize that as you fill us up, it pushes everything out of us that is not like you. Use us for your glory. As you used the 120 on the day of Pentecost, Lord, they filled the earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do it for us today. Not that we may be glorified, but so that your kingdom can be established. For this we give you praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer today. We thank you, Lord, for filling our hearts today. We thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost today. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. 
So Lord, as we prepare to take communion, we fellowship with you in the sacrament of communion. Let us always remember that you love us unconditionally. That you live in us eternally. You walk with us perpetually. And you're a God that never changes. So we thank you. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Would you encourage somebody right next to you? Just love on them and tell them God bless you. If you go back to your seat, we're going to give you communion. And we're going to fellowship together according to the word of God. Hallelujah. I love you, man of God. Thank God for you. Let us be far away from your presence. Let us experience the glory of your love. I'm going to ask my deacons and ministers if you would get in place as we can prepare to have communion, as we can fellowship together in the things of God. Deacons and ministers will ask you to remain where you are. They will bring you your communion and we will eat in fellowship together. Amen. Praise the name of our God. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together and give our God a great praise? Hey, Deacon Enoch. stand for the reading of God's word. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23, Paul writes to us, he says, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. Let us pray. So, Father, we do come in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we come before you with humble hearts. And we ask you right now that you would bless this time of communion, that you would draw your people even closer to you in the name of Jesus Christ, that they might remember the blood that you poured out on Calvary's cross just for us, that how you gave your body to be broken for us, Father, that we might have new life in you. And so now today, have your way in our lives. We'll surely give you praise and glory and honor. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let all God's people say amen. 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 We ask the deacons and ministers to come forward, please. 
took the bread which represents the body of Jesus Christ and he broke it and gave it to them said eat ye all of it let us eat together after the same manner he took also the cup and after he had supped let us drink ye all of it
some praise in the building today. Hey, listen, do me a favor. Do me a favor. If, if you have a social media Facebook account, I want you to go in and check in. I want to see who was here today. And if you're online, I want you to check in too. I want to see who you are out there. Amen. We thank the Lord for you this morning. We thank God. Listen, next Sunday is going to be ridiculous. Our family from the North Campus is coming down. Amen. And then directly after service, directly after service, we're going to be out. We're going to take over this parking lot. We're going to make it a community day. We're going to have, what do they call that, a step and return? Are we going to have one of those? Step, step and fetch it? No, we're going to have a step and repeat uh, where you can take pictures with your family and all that other kind of stuff. Um, and then the following Sunday is what? The following Sunday is Father's Day. So we're doing something special. Come on, put your hands together for all the fathers in the building. We're calling it Donuts and Dads. So we're going to have some free donuts and coffee for you all, uh, for us all. And it's going to be a great time in fellowship. Um, and so we're excited about all that the Lord is doing. Amen. Would you join the hand of your neighbor? Let's get ready to go home. Praise the name of Pastor Juanita all as well. Can you thank the Lord for our overseer today? Amen. Pastor Juanita, my mama. What a great example. Amen. Of a woman of God. Let's pray. Precious God, our Father. And our God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you for all that our eyes have seen and our ears have heard today. The gospel came alive to us. It's real to us. We're able to see what Peter walked through potentially from a Bible-based word perspective, understanding that, God, you're no respecter of purpose, persons, but you have a predestined purpose over our life. And no matter how far we fall, you're able to pick us up again. You're able to rebuild us. You're able to renew us, restore us, refresh us. Use us for your glory. We celebrate this day of Pentecost. For you had it set in history. That you would take that 120 and use them to change the known world. 2,000 years later, we look backward. But we also look forward to what you will do for your soon coming, for your return. We give you praise. Now dismiss us from this place, but never from your divine presence. And we will always give you honor, give you glory, and give you praise. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people who agreed said amen, amen, and amen. Shake somebody's hand before you go. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Please excuse me. I've got upper respiratory situation going on.